All right, for your stunning scenes that are coming in through Sri Lanka, we are going to cut across to our reporters, get you the latest ground reports, but let's get you now a citizen perspective for somebody who's been part of the protest. He's joined us uh, through the course of the last two months. Indrajit uh, Samara Jiva, he's an author. He joins us right now. Indrajit, the kind of visuals that are streaming in from your country are, you know, stunning to say the least. Uh, awestruck, the world is watching. You have... Uh, Mr. Rajapaksa Gotabaya, who's fled right now to the Maldives, what we're getting to understand, onwards to uh, Singapore. But what is going on ground? Because is there a sense of abject anarchy? Are you on the cusp of a possible civil war kind of situation? Or is law and order still prevailing while images of the, you know, the presidential palace, the prime minister's office being taken, all of that comes in? So you use the word chaos, and it's certainly not chaos. And you use the word anarchy, and anarchy really just means society organized democratically from the ground up. So I have been to the president's house. There are children there. You can go around the grounds. I have been to Temple Trees, the prime minister's house. Um, they've set up kitchens there. They're feeding people. It's a tour. People go, I went with my wife. It's, it's actually quite beautiful the way that people manage these public spaces, our spaces. Uh, even the prime minister's office, which was breached today, uh, my relative lives across the street. And when the government started tear gassing and using violence against the people, some of them, those people had to flee into my uncle's house. And they were extremely respectful. They were extremely polite. The, pe this is, the people are behaving quite peacefully. It's not a case of anarchy and civil war. And, or I would say it is anarchy in the, in the philosophical sense. It's not chaos and it's not civil war. People are together. It is the government who is committing violence against us. And I would say that... I mean, the people are legitimate. The government in this case is not. You know, um, Indrajit, would you stay on with me? I want to continue getting in reactions. I also want to pull in our foreign affairs editor, Geeta Mohan, who's joining us. We're going to get uh, across to boots on ground. Uh, we're going to be joined in a short while by my colleague, Ashutosh, who's been filing reports after reports. We're going to play those reports through. But uh, also getting in other reactions, I have with me uh, Dunya Maumur, foreign, foreign, uh, former foreign minister, uh, Maldives. He is joining us. Uh, you know, sir, appreciate you joining us. A lot of protests coming in. Mr. Gotabaya has taken refuge in your country. Is he now confirmed that he's going to be onwards to Singapore or he's going to be, uh, you know, continue to get asylum in your country? Can you hear me, sir? Are you talking to me? Yes, sir, I'm talking to you. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Gotabaya Rajapaksa was elected in 2019 with a big mandate of 6.9 million voting, two-third majority in parliament, a 20th amendment, the most powerful president in the history of Sri Lanka. This president had to flee the country in two and a half years for the crime that he has committed during his tenure in office. As, as I was listening to your uh, news, it is a, uh, it's an anarchy that is a situation that is in Sri Lanka now. At this moment, the, the, uh, the protesters have taken over the president's house the Prime Minister's um, uh, official bungalow, the Prime Minister's office, and then the Presidential Secretariat. All four have been now, it's under the um, um, uh, gaze of the protesters. Uh, total uh, chaos in the country, and um, the opposition is also playing with the uh, situation today. You can see the opposition not allowing uh, the, uh, the Prime, Minister, Prime Minister to continue with his work. They are asking, uh, there is an election due in Parliament, on the Indra, sir, this Mr. Mahmoud, you know, the protesters say that this is, you know, there is no anarchy, there is no chaos, because if you look at it on the streets, it's rather peaceful. Yes, there is anger. We can see it being vented out where the presidential palace was concerned, the prime minister's office was concerned. Uh, we have scenes of, of, you know, of chaos. But the fact, you know, that Mr. Gotabaya, from being a very popular uh, president just about, uh, uh, you know, 30 months ago, now to be the symbol of hatred in Sri Lanka, uh, you know, that's playing out on the streets of Sri Lanka. So, and the question that is being asked of the Maldives is, how can you give him asylum? Actually, this is, this is the problem. Now, you, you, you are saying that the president was very good 13 months before. No, this president was not good. Right from the beginning, when he was nominated president itself, his speeches were anti-minority. He was making that statement and said the single only people voted for me and I am a president who will be doing things and he did things against the minorities. That is a curse that he is paying for. We leave all that aside. But now 
first time in Sri Lanka's history a president had to flee the country. And now from Maldives, he is going to Singapore, we are told. Wherever he goes, the people of this country will not leave him alone. He is answerable to many questions that are going to be raised. The people who were killed, people who were taken in by him, people who were arrested by him, people who were pardoned by him are questions that will be raised in the near future. But nevertheless, today what we all want is all political parties to get together and tell the Prime Minister, look, seven days you are the acting president. Because 20th is the day that we are going to select the president uh, from parliament. Still then, what do we need? What is the support we can extend to you? We will give our fullest support. Should be the answer from all the political parties in this country. But here, we see the political party, especially the main opposition, is playing politics and not allowing anything to happen. They are also part of this Aragaraya. That's what they are trying to say. So what we are saying is a time like this, when the country is suffering, when the cabinet cannot meet, Cabinet cannot make funds for uh, payment of petrol. Diesel is coming into the country. Um, uh, gas is coming into the country. When all these things are happening, the excitement is that the opposition has got excited whether things will go right. But the problem is this. The people are suffering. People have no food to eat. People are really suffering. People who ate three times are eating only once now. So that is why we tell. We call upon all the parliamentarians, 225 parliamentarians. The protesters are saying all 225 are rogues and they must go. But what we are saying is we have only two things to work with. One is parliament and one is our constitution. So we can't go beyond the constitution. When a president of the country leaves the country and then the prime minister takes over one, one way. Second way is on a resignation of the president, the prime minister is appointed temporarily as an acting prime uh, president for only one month. Within that one month, you have to have rectification. Now you have about five to seven people trying to contest as presidential candidate on the 20th of this month. So let them do that. There is no worry whatsoever. We are not interested in that. All what we are interested in is to ensure the safety of these buildings that have been taken over. Anybody can go into these buildings, but to safeguard these heritage buildings is the most important thing. Everybody should get together to protect these things because this is our future generation that will ask us what happened to these places. Nobody can give conditions over that.